For millions of years, dinosaurs have had to live in a constant battleground, fighting for food, territory, and mates. But their fight for world domination is taking a dark turn. The Earth is changing rapidly, and the makeup of the continents is dramatically influencing the ecosystems of the planet. As the climate cools, the western interior seaway that divided North America for so long has begun to disappear, destroying lush habitat and endangering the hunting grounds for once great predators. Farther south, the landmass that is India is plagued by violent volcanism, leading to variable weather patterns and habitat destruction. It's a situation that could very well spell doom for its inhabitants and will lead to further chaos on a global scale. This is the story of the inhabitants of these changing worlds. They will endure the faint but brutal ramifications of a rapidly evolving Earth, and only the strong will survive. These are the tales of the animals that will experience the beginning of the end of their world, here on Dinosaurs Unleashed. It's the beginning of the wet season. Though the ground seems dry, new plants are starting to sprout. Still, it will take some time before the area becomes truly lush and green. This is a male Hypacrosaurus a 9 meter long hadrosaur. Hypacrosaurus is a lambiosaur, a subgroup of hadrosaurs that is identified by their unique crests. Once lambiosaurs roamed far and wide over America, but the death of the western interior seaway, combined with the evolution of more advanced, non-crested hadrosaurs, has driven most of them to extinction. Hypacrosaurus is one of the last of its kind. 
For this male, the mating season is coming, and he needs to build up his strength in order to appeal to the females. But out in the open, he makes himself dangerously exposed to predators. This is a female Albertosaurus, who we will know as Hawkeye. At 10 meters long, Albertosaurus is a member of a subfamily of Tyrannosaurs, quite aptly named Albertosaurids. Though related to species like Daspletosaurus, they are very different in physical form. Compared to their larger cousins, Albertosaurids had long, thin legs which made them faster and more nimble. Their bodies were also less powerful, made for speed and not brute strength. But the greatest difference comes from their jaws. Albertosaurs lack the bone-crushing bites of other Tyrannosaurs, and rather than having round, blunt teeth, they have thin, knife-like teeth, meant to cut flesh, not pulverize bone. For a while this body plan worked, but then the prey got bigger and more aggressive, and required more firepower, something the Albertosaurs simply could not bring to the table. That, combined with increasing competition from other Tyrannosaurs, has pushed Albertosaurus to the brink of extinction. Albertosaurus sarcophagus itself is the last of a dying breed. Not all of the dinosaurs here are finding it difficult to survive, however. This is a herd of Eotriceratops. At 9 meters in length, they are the largest of the Ceratopsians. They are more suited to the dry climate than most of their contemporaries, giving them an advantage over other herbivores. Their skulls measure 3 meters in length, equipped with wickedly formidable horns. This is the herd's leader, Sitting Bull. He's strong and aggressive, despite being 30 years old. A younger male approaches. Sitting Bull reacts instinctively. No blood was spilt today, but another confrontation is bound to happen. A week passes.
Hawkeye is finding difficulty trying to find suitable prey. She spots a Hypacrosaurus. The invaders are stronger. For Hawkeye, it's time to leave. A few miles away, the Eotriceratops have made a pit stop to feed on their never-ending search for food. Sitting Bull himself is finding peace in his forage. But all that is about to change. It's the younger Bull. Back to you, sir, sitting bull for good. If the challengers cannot make a truce, then they'll have to come to blows. From a general standpoint, Eotriceratops' horns seem to be perfect for jousting with one another for mates and territory. But because so few skulls of this animal have been found, there is no evidence that such fights ended in an injury. Despite this, there is evidence in Eotriceratops' relatives that such fights did end violently. This Taurosaurus skeleton is one good example. On the side of its frill, this individual bores a healed wound that could only have come from another Taurosaurus. 
Usurped Sitting Bull will now have to leave. It's late afternoon in the forest. With the midday heat lessening, the activity of animal life is increasing. India during the late Cretaceous is a world under siege. Its relatively peaceful exterior hides one of the largest volcanic features on Earth, the Deccan Traps. Now they have become more active and frequent eruptions have forced dinosaurs to travel long distances in search of food and sanctuary. Among the inhabitants of this false paradise are large sauropods, like this female Janosaurus. At around 18 meters long, she is big for a dinosaur. However, she is a mere shadow of the glory days of the giant Cretaceous sauropods that flourished in South America and Africa. The sauropods that continue their family line are not the giants of the past, and it is unlikely they will ever reach their apex again. She has traveled long and hard to find ample nutrition, with her previous feeding grounds having been destroyed in a recent volcanic eruption. But her journey has left her weary and unaware of her surroundings. Her leg is broken. She can't get up. Struggles have alerted this male Rajasaurus. Rajasaurus is an abelosaur, and is in fact among the largest of them all. With the end of the great Carcharodontosaurus, like Giganotosaurus and Carcharodontosaurus, abelosaurs quickly became the top predators of the southern hemisphere, and have therefore diversified into many species. In South America there is the infamous Carnotaurus, while on the island of Madagascar there is Majungasaurus. Here in India, there are four known species of abelosaur, with Rajasaurus being the biggest. At 6 to 7 meters in length, it is very large for its kind. Like Carnotaurus, Rajasaurus bores a horn-like structure on top of its skull, presumably used in headbutting contests between males. With its short, deep skull, the Rajasaurus can dive right into a carcass without any worry about table manners. A younger male approaches. He has escaped fatal injury, but to get at the carcass, he'll have to be patient. Having eaten his fill, the first male rests near his prize. The Janosaurus still has plenty of meat on it.
The younger male makes his move. One month after Sitting Bull was usurped from power, Alberta has become a living Eden. Plant life flourishes, and so do the herbivores. A mother hypacrosaurus and her baby forage. At only five years old, this youngster is starting to become more independent, ready to explore the outside world on his own. It's sitting bull. For Sitting Bull, life without a herd is tough. His age is getting to him, making him weaker. Old, alone, and out in the open, Sitting Bull is now dangerously exposed to predators. Hawkeye isn't doing so well either. She has been forced to journey beyond her old hunting grounds just to find a satisfying meal, and scavenging on carcasses isn't enough. Hunting something as dangerous as an Eotriceratops seems desperate, but for the Albertosaurus, it's a risk that she must take.
in India, the dinosaurs continue to live on edge. It's the male Rajasaurus again. He's not here to hunt the frightened Janosaurus, just simply to patrol his territory. He's wary, with large tracts of hunting grounds being destroyed by heavy volcanism. Competition for resources is becoming more frequent and more dangerous. An intruding male has wandered into his territory. The rival has broken the old male's neck. Presented with a free meal, the young male takes advantage of the situation. Cannibalism among theropods was always speculated by scientists, but it was in 1996 when actual proof came to light. In Madagascar, the bones of a Majungasaurus showed signs of unhealed bite marks. When the marks were compared with the teeth of another Mojungasaurus, they matched perfectly. It seemed very apparent that, whether through scavenging or outright killing his fellow Abelosaur, the Mojungasaurus was feeding on another member of his own kind. It's possible that cannibalism occurred at a time when fresh meat was scarce, and starving theropods fought, killed, and then ate each other for food. Similar occurrences may have arose in other parts of the world at this time, as prey began to decline from environmental ruin. Rajasaurus would disappear from the fossil record around this time, implying its extinction, a fate shared by other dinosaurs across the globe. Albertosaurus would eventually become extinct, thereby ending the reign of the Albertosaurids. Along with it will be Hypacrosaurus, whose demise will mark the end of the Lambiosaurus in North America, though a few species would survive in Asia. It's an extinction that will have a profound effect on the ecosystems in the Cretaceous. But even for the dinosaurs that do survive, their reign is nearing its end. After nearly 160 million years of dominance over planet Earth, the dinosaurs were facing near total extinction unable to cope with the climactic upheaval of their world. But their ultimate end would not come from the Earth itself.